So I'm sure we're going to be, um, I'm sure people will be hopping on as they get their coffee and, and get to their computers, but we're going to move forward because we have a pretty tight schedule today. This will all be recorded. So anyone that arrives late will be able to um, jump back and see that. So welcome everybody. Thank you for being here. My name is Gwen Soffer and I am the Director of Wellness at Nationality Service Center. We're located in Philadelphia, and we are a nonprofit that serves immigrants and refugees throughout the Philadelphia region. Um, today, in this conference, there will be three sessions. You should have gotten uh, a schedule. Um, there's one small change, which you'll see. Um, Layla, uh, where Deloria and Rosa Reynosa's uh, presentation has been moved to the first session. You'll see all this when you go to choose which which um, option, uh, which tra uh, presentation you'll be in. So when you when we start the presentations, you'll be able to choose one of three for each session. They will all be recorded, so you'll be able to go back and see others. If you change your mind and you want to flip into another one, you're welcome to do that. This will all be through the lobby. You should be able to see everything through the lobby and join there. This is now a, a webinar. It just makes it a little easier with communication. If you have any questions, you'll do that through the question and answer section. There'll also be a survey at the end of the whole day. Um, I think you can get into the lobby up until later this evening. So if you miss that, please go back there. There is a survey for you to take and I'll try to send that out by email as well. We also offer CEUs from this event. If that's something that you're interested in, please email me afterwards and I can send you the information. I'm going to hand it over to Susanna here to talk a little bit about our Greater Philadelphia Immigrant Mental Health Alliance. Okay, thank you, Gwen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Uh, my name is Susanna Francis, and I am a psychologist and co-founder of the Immigrant Psychology Network. We work uh, primarily in the suburbs of Philadelphia. The idea for the Greater Philadelphia Immigrant Mental Health Alliance came about after I connected with Gwen, and we realized that despite so many of us working to support immigrant mental health, we lack the resources and opportunities to really like learn from one another. So we were all kind of operating in our own silos. Um, there was a real gap, especially in addressing mental health. So uh, although there's resources and conferences for things like trauma or refugees or the legal aspects of immigration, uh, there really is little to address the unique mental health needs of our immigrant communities. So today's conference grew from that idea, and we are proud that our focus has attracted interest from across the world. Um, and we hope to continue to grow and uh, expand the reach of the conference for next year. So in addition to the conference, uh, we all invite you to consider joining the Mental Health Alliance. So we host monthly we try to host monthly virtual meetings uh, to share knowledge, discuss challenges, and support each other in this work. And additionally, we're going to be promoting a listserv where we can stay connected in between uh, these meetings. And my hope is that together we can keep building this network, not just for Philadelphia, but for anyone who shares in this important mission. And I will now turn things over to Peter, who will share some opening remarks and kick off the conference. Okay, good morning. Uh, thanks, Gwen. Thanks, Susanna. And I'm glad to have just a couple minutes here to hopefully set a tone. Um, uh, the task was to offer some words of encouragement, and, I, and I'm and I'm honored to get, to get a minute to do that, though I have to, I think, at first admit that it, maybe it's a little odd and even ironic that a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant non-immigrant such as myself is even being given that opportunity. Um, um, and I think I it's really a tribute to Gwen and Susanna in the spirit of uh, total total inclusivity that they uh, bring to the, the planning here. So thanks for that. And I, I'll be brief. Um, I've been working as a clinical psychologist for about 17 years, and I, I don't think I've ever really um, known much about or certainly ever attended a conference like this one that's really being led by and for people of such diverse backgrounds. It's awesome. So I've been looking forward to this for a few months. And Look, I will be a participant. I know I stand to learn a lot today. So a huge thanks to everyone behind the scenes and in front of the cameras who is making this possible. It's 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 more work than I think any of us can appreciate to pull this off. So 
Um, words of encouragement. Um, I mean, I think coming from a place of concern for all of you, all of us, the folks who show up to do this work, to train, to learn, to serve people from across the world who really have incredible vulnerabilities, even as they also, of course, have incredible strengths. How do we sustain ourselves through this difficult work uh, of witnessing the constancy of disruption of lives and massive scale of trauma and loss? Of course, we look in the literature and there's all kinds of materials in the literature and the universities, conferences about self-care. And we all know what that is. Keep a routine, practice mindfulness, breathing exercises, yoga, get enough sleep, avoid drugs and alcohol, stay active, connect with friends, go out in nature. They're all important uh, and even essential. But what I want to speak to is the idea that maybe there's a little bit of a double standard sometimes um, in terms of what self-care is for therapists on this issue of emotional processing. Emotional processing, exposure therapy, EMDR, working towards greater acceptance, whatever type of therapy you may be using, our therapies tend to emphasize that keeping grief bound up fuels irritability, anger, and emotional numbing that stymies relationships. We, we, one way or another, we're often communicating to our clients or at least implying you need to feel it to heal it. Why doesn't that apply more to therapists? Instead, for ourselves, we, we tend to emphasize self-care practices that really look more like stress management. Again, essential, but, but maybe there's more to that, to that conversation. During my clinical internship, my director encouraged us to cry every day. And I remember being stunned by that advice, um, but I've thought a lot about it over the years. And of course, he didn't just mean to grieve every day. He really meant to try to stay open-hearted every day to what moves you, both the grief, the pain, the sadness, the joy, the beauty, but to stay somehow open-hearted in the face of um, the grief, uh, the, the, tr the, the trauma, and the tragedies that are part of the daily conversation of your work. That just um, that it might we might encourage our clients to build just as we encourage our clients to build their capacity to tolerate difficult emotions and painful realities that maybe we too as therapists need to do more of that. We need to have supportive relationships, professional and personal. We need communities of practice, maybe rituals, places where we can grieve and allow ourselves to feel more into the realities we're bearing witness to on behalf of a world that often really doesn't want to look more closely. Maybe compassion fatigue is not so much just hearing too many traumatic stories as we tend to assume. Compassion fatigue can also come from not engaging with those stories in an open-hearted way. So for myself, allowing myself to cry, to grieve whenever it arises in me, I know it helps to keep me loose and I feel better afterward. It's no different from what I'm asking clients to do with their stories. So my words of encouragement are as much a question to consider. Self-care is essential, but additionally, what do you need to keep yourself open-hearted and connected to the emotional pain of your clients' lived realities in a way that the pain can move through you and not crush your vitality so that you can sustain this work for as long as you feel called to do? So thank you, and thanks for the day. I look forward to being with you. Thank you so much, Peter. And Peter is also on our board, which I was very excited to learn and get to know Peter with his specialty in uh, mental health and trauma. So thank you so much for sharing those words with us. I think that's a great reminder. I love that cry every day. Um, I think that that's something sometimes we think we can't do. We have to be strong, but that that is such an important reminder. So thank you so much. Um, so for the rest of the day, uh, everyone, you will be will be moving from this um, opening session. You should be able to see the sessions that you want to join in the lobby. There's a short time period between each se session so that you can, you know, get use the bathroom, take a walk, whatever you need to do and come back. Um, and there'll also be a lunch break. Originally, we were going to do some networking then, but I think it's a, a good time to just break and, and get, you know, maybe you need to check your emails or take, um, you know, walk outside and get some lunch or whatever. So we look forward to you, seeing you in the sessions that are coming up. And um, you can, again, put any questions into the question and answer before we before we move out of this session.
Okay. Um, so there was a question. You should be able to see us, but you won't be able to turn your camera on since a webinar. So, you know, you won't have to worry about that. Again, contact us through the questions and answers, and we'll see you in the next session.